I'm ready. Can you hear me? Yes, you may start now. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you uh, for joining uh, in this uh, lecture. Uh, good morning, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone. Uh, so today we will uh, give a look about how to create uh, uh, Pepper applications. Uh, I hope you've been able to install everything. And uh, I've seen in the chat that there are some questions about some particular configurations. We'll, of course, try to solve all these questions. I'll come to this uh, later on at the end of this lecture. But now today, I'd like to focus on uh, uh, creating uh, uh, new uh, robotic applications through the Android Studio and the Pepper SDK that uh, we installed uh, uh, with the instruction of the last lecture. So we will go through the main steps that are needed to create uh, an application. And uh, for today, we will show very simple applications that are, of course, uh, composed by uh, simple elements. And uh, in the next lecture, we will uh, uh, explore other uh, functionalities uh, and integrate these functionalities in a more complex way. So uh, how to create an application? So we first need to create uh, an Android application and then to transform this uh, in a Pepper application. Uh, so I will uh, show you these steps uh, uh, live. Uh, so you will see on this uh, uh, portion of the screen, uh, the, uh, the slides, and I will uh, uh, also show you exactly what to do. Well, it's quite easy, but I think it's uh, uh, good to see uh, how it works. Uh, so uh, first of all, let's imagine that uh, you start from scratch. You, can, you will see that uh, after you create the first application, then you will find uh, your applications here. So you can uh, always access your applications from to, uh, clicking here. And now let's start with a new one. So uh, you uh, will select this uh, option to start a new Android Studio project. If you have uh, an existing Android Studio project, for example, that what, the one that comes with the SDK tutorials from SoftBank or some other uh, package that we will uh, uh, make you available, then uh, you can open uh, an existing Open Studio project here. So if we start a new one, uh, the first option uh, is to select uh, an empty activity. Okay, there are many options here to select uh, different kinds of activities uh, for uh, um, Android applications. Here we are interested in uh, uh, selecting an empty activity, that is the common uh, <coughs> Um, starting point for a Pepper project. Uh, we go ahead and uh, we need to choose uh, a name of the application. So here you write uh, the name of the application. You can, of course, generate uh, uh, several applications. Uh, my I write here something like my home edu project. And uh, here you can choose a package name, but you can also leave the default one. And uh, you can choose uh, the directory in which you want uh, this project to be, to be uh, saved. And again, you can uh, keep the default one. <coughs> uh, you can choose uh, uh, the language, uh, either Kotlin or Java. And uh, of course, you can choose whatever you want, but in our, in these classes, uh, we will focus on Java language. It is possible uh, and sometimes even convenient to use Kotlin for some, uh, I would say, more advanced applications. Uh, but unfortunately, we will not be able to cover uh, the two languages in this class, so we will use only uh, Java. And another important thing is uh, to select uh, the a minimum SDK as API 23 Android 6.0. So here there is uh, a long list, uh, but uh, you really need to select uh, this one. 
Okay, so these are the configuration of the empty activity and once done, you click, click on finish. And uh, <coughs> the activity is generated and the system is now creating a lot of files, many files. Uh, and also here you have to wait a little bit uh, that uh, uh, the task is completed. So this can, may take uh, more or less time depending on your configuration. So at the end, uh, this uh, process has generated, uh, here you can read uh, the uh, full path. So in, in this case, uh, from my home uh, directory, then in the source subdirectory, Pepper, and my home edu project. And uh, if you go in this folder, you'll find uh, uh, several files that are being created. So it's good to know what's going on in your system. So here you can read the folder in which all the files are present. And in this section of the window, you have uh, the structure of all the trees and uh, uh, some of the files that are important. Uh, uh, I will comment them uh, uh, later on. Now we have to do another step because now we created an Android application, but actually we want to create a Pepper application. So in order to transform an Android app to a Pepper app, we need to tell the Android Studio editor that we want to use the Pepper SDK. And so this operation is very important and must be done by creating a new robot application on top of this project. So once we create an empty activity, we have to do this other step of creating a new robot application. Otherwise, this will not work, okay? So this application is not available for Pepper. It's just a gener generic application for Android. So in order to do this, we have to create a new robot application. And we can do it uh, on the file menu. So when you click on file, you have the new option. And then, uh, sorry, that's not easy. And then you have this uh, option here, robot application. Or uh, alternatively, you can right click uh, on the app. And again, you have new and you have uh, robot application. So when uh, you select uh, to create a new robot application, you will see a dialog window coming up in which you have to select the minimum SDK. I assume you installed the API 6, and so you have actually only this option. And in case you install the other SDK, it's good that you select the highest level, that is a API 6 at this moment, and the module app also. In this case, you have no other choices because we are uh, generating uh, projects with only one app. So you confirm these choices, and now you have uh, a robot application. And you will see there's a difference that other files have been generated, in particular this uh, robot SDK. And, uh, uh, so in this uh, section here, you have the important files uh, that we need to uh, work on. So uh, the robot SDK, the activity main SDK uh, XML, and uh, the main activity.java. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we'll uh, comment this. But we need to do another step before proceeding. That is uh, to set the Java compatibility of this project. This is also very important, otherwise there may be some uh, uh, mistakes or uh, not uh, nice features. So we go to again to File Menu and Project Structure. So again, File Project Structure here, and we need to select the Modules section here and to explicitly set uh, source compatibility to version uh, 1.8, to Java version 1.8, and the same for target compatibility. Okay, so you make sure that uh, uh, you open the project structure under file and the module section, and you set this uh, to 1.8. Okay, so you apply these changes and you click OK. And now we have uh, done this process. So this process uh, must be done uh, only once. 
only when you create your project. Now I can uh, work on this project uh, and uh, I don't need to repeat, of course, all these operations. So these operations are necessary every time you create a new robot application. And of course you do it only once. Okay. So now uh, the two important files uh, on which you will work uh, today are uh, the main activity.java and activity main.xml. So the uh, studio editor will put these two files already opened in this uh, uh, section. So you can switch from one file to another uh, just clicking here in this section. Uh, of course, you can access also this information through the uh, navigation window. In particular, the main activity is under app, Java, and then the um, name of your project. And uh, the, um, yeah, and here you can find the resources. The activity main XML is under res, it stands for resources and layout. There are other files in this uh, package. There are many other files <coughs> that uh, today we will focus only on the main activity.java and activity main.xml. And uh, I will show you later on uh, how to use uh, other resources uh, and, of course, possible, uh, uh, possibly other files. Okay. <coughs> So now what uh, uh, would be the meaning? Uh, so uh, the activity main.xml will contain the layout of the graphical user interface that will appear on the tablet of Pepper Robot. Okay, so here we can design the layout, for example, text, the images, uh, uh, videos, buttons, uh, or whatever you want to make appearing uh, in the user interface of the Android tablet on the robot, while the Java program <coughs> would actually manage and control, monitor all the execution of the tasks on the robot. Okay, so today we'll focus on these two <coughs> parts. Let's go back to the slide and let's see uh, what we have. Oh yes, this is another uh, configuration that may be necessary when you design uh, the layout. Uh, you can go here and select the activity main and here you have three uh, mode of visualization. Let me increase this window. So uh, here you see just the XML text you can have uh, uh, a different view in which you see at the same time the text and the layout, the graphical view of the layout, or you can have uh, another view in which you see only the layout. Now, if you want to see exactly what will be the appearance of the layout in the uh, tablet of the robot, you have to select the specific model. So here, when you where you read the pixel, which is the default uh, device uh, for the uh, design of the layout, uh, you can change it to the pepper one. So you click here, you select uh, uh, generic fonts and tablets, uh, and here you find uh, one option that is pepper 1.9. So there is only one pepper option, so you cannot miss it. But it's not in the main menu. So it's not here in the first menu, but we have to select this uh, uh, item, uh, generic fonts and tablets, and then uh, go to the pepper one. So if you click here, uh, the difference is just that now you will have uh, a configuration in which uh, this uh, layout uh, would, is set uh, with the specifications of the Pepper layout. So when you design the graphical user interface here, you will see exactly uh, what uh, uh, will appear on the actual robot. Anyway, we will not see this part uh, today, uh, but just to let you know that this is uh, 
uh, of course, uh, possible. And in order to get uh, to this point, uh, uh, remember to select uh, the specific type of device. If you don't uh, need to design uh, uh, the graphical layout, uh, you don't need uh, to uh, activate this option here. Okay, so let's see uh, how to write uh, a first application. <laughs> so once we create the project, we are in the situation in which we have the files, and in particular, this uh, main activity file contains uh, some uh, information, but uh, this is not yet the code uh, that uh, is useful to run on the robot. So if you're trying to run this code, uh, it will not uh, be actually uh, uh, code runnable for Pepper robot. So now we created the, the container of the project and we have to fill it uh, with uh, concrete information. So what we have to do is to <coughs> uh, modify this class the main activity class of the uh, Java file to uh, add components, uh, functions uh, that are uh, that will work uh, on the robot. Okay, so now unfortunately in this class uh, we cannot go into the details of the Java programming language, uh, so we cannot explain uh, the um, the language itself. Uh, Java is uh, an object-oriented programming language, so you uh, define uh, classes and you use objects of these classes. And all the Java files uh, are <coughs> definition of a class. So in this uh, Java file, the file main activity dot Java, we define the class that is called main activity. And this is the main class. Actually, it will be the unit class in this project, but in general, you can define multiple classes. And this is the main class that will manage all the behavior of the robot. So a class in Java is defined in terms of a set of functions or methods. And in order to have a proper definition of a Java class, that uh, will manage the behavior of Pepper Robot, uh, we have to specify these methods. And here you see when you create a project, you see only the definition of one method that is called onCreate. So uh, the definition of a method has some uh, keywords, then the name of the method, in this case, uh, the name is onCreate, and then some parameters. And, uh, sorry. After the parameters, you have uh, the body that are Java instructions that are uh, enclosed in uh, parentheses. Okay, so here we see an example of a definition of the Java class main activity that contains only one method on create, but actually in order to have uh, <coughs> a full uh, pepper Java class, we need uh, to change uh, this uh, definition. And we need to change uh, the definition of the main class with additional components. And we need uh, at the end to uh, define several uh, methods, actually five methods. One method on create, the method on destroy, the two methods on robot focus loss and on robot focus refused, and the method on robot focus gained. Now, there is a structure, and so there are some uh, uh, parts of the uh, code that uh, are always the same for any Pepper application. And so the best is to start from a template. And uh, as uh, was the one of the assignments uh, for uh, uh, last week, the easiest way to do is to take uh, this code from uh, maybe a previous project or, for example, from this repository here the, that you find uh, 
in the RoboCapetom Edu uh, GitHub uh, repository, and this repository is called uh, RC Home Edu Learn Pepper. And here you find uh, some, uh, let me increase a little bit to the phone. You find uh, some uh, uh, simple examples, and uh, in particular, in each of these folders, uh, you find uh, some examples. Here at the end, you will find the three examples that I will show you today in this lecture. And uh, uh, in this folder, for example, you find uh, the main activity.java file that is related to the first uh, demo application or test activity that is uh, just uh, very simple. So what you can do is to uh, directly take uh, this uh, code here. here. You find all the instructions and the easiest way is uh, to copy all the code Okay, so I select all this code, I copy it, and I paste it here. And what is important is that I have to keep the package instruction because this package contains the information of the, <clears throat> of the project that has been created. So I must not delete this first statement because otherwise the project will not be consistent anymore. So that's something that is specific for your project. And this here, your, the name of your project will appear. So this uh, first statement in the main activity of Java must not be changed, but what you can do is to replace all the rest. Okay, so now I created, uh, I copied all this, uh, statements from this simple uh, <coughs> uh, example here and uh, now the code is changed but actually what i did is just uh, to uh, change the definition of the main activity class because now we have uh, an additional part of the specification of the class uh, that uh, is related with uh, uh, pepper robot in particular it describes that this is now a robot activity it's not just a simple android activity but it's a robot activity so it will run on pepper robot and uh, some other uh, components and then we you see a template of definition for the five methods that uh, you need to implement so on create on destroy on the robot focus gain a robot focus lost and a robot focus refused <coughs> Now, what we will have to understand is uh, what is the code that we have to write, okay? And that's the main goal of the uh, lectures uh, that uh, we will give from uh, this one to the next ones uh, in the next days. So this is a kind of template and every application you uh, uh, We'll have to do the same steps until now. But now the different application will differ from what you will write here, okay? So this process of creating the Android app, uh, making a new robot application, and uh, a fill in this template, uh, these uh, tasks uh, until uh, this point uh, are common to every application that you will develop. But then now we need to create different applications and I will show you how to do it. So let's go a little bit more in detail about uh, what uh, has been done here. Uh, so uh, the onCreate uh, uh, methods uh, is actually run uh, when uh, the activity started. So here you have some initialization of the um, well, of the system of the application, in particular, uh, we need this operation to register this activity to the overall uh, uh, Pepper system. So Pepper uh, is uh, always alive. Okay, so this means that uh, when you run the emulator, but also when uh, you run uh, the uh, real robot, of course, uh, there are already some activities running on. And you can even see it in the simulator 
the emulator that the robot uh, is alive. You can see that is, for example, making some small movements uh, of the <coughs> of the body. So this means that there are already some uh, activities. Uh, there are already some processes running uh, uh, during. Uh, at any time, okay? So now what we do now is to just add an additional activity on top of the other ones that are already running. So we have to tell the system that there is a new activity that uh, will be run. And uh, <clears throat> then when the uh, activity terminates, uh, we have to do the opposite. So we unregister this activity uh, to the system so we communicate to the system that the activity is not longer is no longer uh, available okay so this means uh, that uh, we have to do here some initialization so our operations that uh, needs to be done only once uh, when uh, the activity is created and here uh, we will uh, do operations that uh, must be done only once when the activity is destroyed okay then uh, we have uh, uh, these other uh, um, three methods. So you know that in an Android uh, application, uh, you may have uh, many applications. So even here in the simulator, you have many applications like a browser. Okay, you can go here and uh, use the browser of the Android uh, app, or you can use another application for phones or whatever. Anyway, you know that uh, this is like your smartphone. You have many applications running. And uh, uh, so, by the way, these are some examples that I ran just before. So you have many applications running and uh, uh, you can switch from one application to another. So the uh, robot focus gained is uh, the method that uh, will uh, run when the application gets the focus. So for example, if I have many applications available, I can give the focus uh, to one. And uh, uh, in that case, uh, the, the instructions, so the <coughs> uh, actions uh, that are uh, written uh, in this uh, portion of the code will be executed. Um, here, uh, there will be uh, execution of instructions when the uh, application uh, lost uh, lost the focus uh, means that, for example, when I switch from one application to another, I will uh, make the focus on the first application uh, uh, lost uh, and the focus uh, on the first uh, on the second application gained. And uh, the for this other method is when the uh, focus is refused. Anyway, we will not uh, consider today this. Uh, two options. So we start to consider, we just consider cases very simple in which we create an application and then we give the focus on an application. And then when we are uh, want to stop the application, we just destroy it. We will see more advanced uh, uh, cases uh, uh, later on. So it means that here we have to decide what to do when we create, create the application and what to do when the application is gaining focus. And in this very simple example, we are not doing anything interesting here. So just the basic function that is register this activity, which is needed, but it doesn't make anything. It doesn't show any effect on the robot. While in the on robot focus gain method, so when the application just get the actually get the focus on the tablet, we do something, and in particular here we just use. Uh, we'll see more in details later on. <coughs> we use this uh, uh, sequence of instructions to create an action, say, with the parameter that is a string, uh, hello human, and uh, we run this action. So these instructions, uh, uh, very simply, will make the robot uh, say through the spoken system, uh, the words, uh, hello human. Now, on the real robot, you will actually listen to the sounds coming from the speakers of the robot, while on the simulator, you will see uh, something appearing here, 
that to denote the balloon with the text, and you will also read uh, something here. Okay, so now that uh, we have this application, we can actually uh, build the application and run. And so we have these two functions. One is to build the application, uh, to make the project, and uh, we can uh, just uh, press this button here, the button with the hammer that has the meaning of building the application. And uh, we can check here if uh, everything goes well. And uh, this takes a little, little bit of time because the system is uh, checking that uh, whatever we write is correct. And uh, if everything goes well, uh, we have success. So it says that uh, the build has been successful. Now we can run the application. Otherwise, there may be mistakes. For example, uh, we make a mistake in which uh, we don't uh, write correctly something and then the build process will generate errors. So here there is an error that says that, well, whatever, now I'm not interested about that. error. So when everything is okay, the build process will terminate successfully. Otherwise, there are errors, of course, we have to correct these errors before proceeding. Now, after successful build, we can run the application. And running the application can be done by clicking this other uh, button here, run app. And we'll see the execution of this app that contains uh, the, takes some time. And you have seen here, it's been very quick, uh, the appearance of the hello human thing, but you can check also in the dialogue view that the robot said hello human. And at the same time, you see that the Android tablet contains uh, um, the design of uh, uh, the <coughs> layout that is specified here. It's a very simple layout in which there is, there is only a text field that contains uh, hello world, okay? And this is what uh, you see here. So this application is very simple. There is a, a layout for the graphical interface on the tablet of the robot that contains only some text, and the text contains only hello world. And uh, the uh, Java program uh, has the, just the execution of the same action, okay? Now, the, you see the activity is still running. And uh, if we want to stop the activity, we don't have other ways at this moment. Uh, and we can just use the stop button. That is uh, this uh, red uh, square here in the graphical interface. So when we click this, uh, the um, application is stopped and uh, it starts again. It, uh, the system goes back, so it's, uh, we killed this application. So we can start again, and now when I click this again, uh, uh, please uh, focus uh, your uh, attention in this part of the screen. Uh, you will see very quickly to appearing uh, a, balloon, a balloon with hello human, and then uh, uh, it disappears. You also have seen a little bit uh, motion of the head of the robot. If you uh, of course, you can change uh, this statement, uh, this string here, to have the robot say something different. As well as you can, of course, change uh, this text here to make something different appearing in this section. Okay, so... Um, About the design of the graphical user interface, this is something that is not specific of the Pepper robot. So it's just a plain Android uh, tools. And there are many uh, tutorials about uh, how to design uh, graphical user interfaces for uh, Android applications. It's something not specific of the Pepper robot, so we will not cover uh, 
uh, this fully, at least in this lecture, maybe we will show something in the next lectures. Uh, and here we are giving you a pointer to a tutorial about uh, how to build uh, Android applications. So that we will not cover here. Okay, now this is the example that I just show you. Now let's see something more complex, uh, a little bit more complex. The problem, well, this application is very simple. And uh, just for example, in order to repeat uh, the uh, robot to say something, uh, I have to uh, run again the, um, the application and there is actually no interaction with people so the robot just say hello human when the application starts now we want to introduce uh, uh, another element actually we want to introduce uh, the possibility for the robot to react to user input so we need that input modality and in this example we choose as input modality just a button so we want to add uh, here in the user interface a button and uh, we want to link uh, the press the action to push the button with some uh, reaction of the robot so we want to show the ability of the robot to react to some user input okay so in order to do this uh, we will add uh, a button into our uh, graphical user interface. So in the activity mind.xml, we will add a button. Now I will, uh, you, you will find this code in, uh, in the um, start and say uh, project here. Okay, so if you go Again, uh, to this folder, uh, there is hello human is the um, example that we just saw. Uh, start and say is the second example that I'm showing now. And the start animation is the third example that I'll show you later. Now, if you go here, you find that this time uh, uh, two files. So one is the main activity.java and the other one is the activity main.xml. So uh, you can, uh, create a new project and uh, copy this, uh, the content on these two files uh, into the new project. This is something that I already have done here, so I don't repeat this process. It's the same as before. Uh, just remember to not change the package instructions and keep the package instructions of your project and replace everything else for the main activity.java, copying what you find here, and uh, also replacing everything from here. So now you, what you will see is uh, uh, the same text view as before. I just uh, added the different color and uh, different sides of the text and uh, a button. Okay, so now in the user interface, uh, that if we want to see exactly how this would appear on the pep robot we have to select pep per device and now the user interface is again a low word but now it's written in red and it's bigger font and then we have a button here with the label start okay of course again you can change whatever you want in this user interface Okay, so this is the design, of, the design of the user interface. Now, what do we want to do is to link the input of the user. So we want to link the input that the robot receives when the user clicks the button start with some action. And so this is what we have done here in May Activity and what I will show you now. So first, uh, let me um, again uh, summarize the steps. Uh, first of all, uh, we add the button in the graphical user interface. Then uh, we need to links uh, to uh, define a listener. So a component in the Java programming language that decide which instructions 
must be run when uh, the button is pressed. So it means that we have to write the code that has the following semantics. When uh, this button, uh, so each element uh, here is named uh, with uh, an identifier. So in this case, uh, this button is button one. Of course, you, you can have multiple buttons uh, in the user interface. Uh, and in, that, in this case, you have to make sure that uh, each button has a unique identifier. So this particular button is named uh, button one. And here we have to say uh, what happens when button one is uh, pressed. And so this portion of the Java code in the main activity.java says that uh, when button one is pressed, then I have to do whatever is written here. Okay. So first step, adding elements in the user interface. Second step, linking the user interface, the elements of the user interface with Java code. And then of course, the third step is to decide what to do. So what should we do when the button is pressed? So how, what can I write, what should I write here in this uh, section? Well, uh, usually what we want to do is to run actions. So we can define actions. For example, in this case, we will see how to define the say action. So an action that would allow the robot to say something. But of course, you can define many different actions. We will show another one in the third example today. And uh, we need to initialize uh, all these actions. So for example, here we initialize an action for, uh, that allows the robot to say hello, and we will have to initialize actions uh, of different kinds with different parameters. And uh, at the end, once we have all these elements, uh, we can complete uh, the um, programming of the um, event uh, or the reaction to the event by saying, for example, in this case, uh, that when button one is pressed, then the say action must be run. Okay, so these are the steps. I repeat, defining some elements in the GUI, uh, defining the listener, so the portion of code that uh, uh, links the event to what uh, uh, the um, program will do. Then the definition of actions. And finally, the link between the listener and the action. So the implementation of the listener with the, the run of the action. So now everything is a little bit more complex. So we need uh, more structures here and we need to introduce additional components of the Java uh, programming uh, environment. So in particular, uh, you see here a section in which uh, we need to define variables that uh, will be visible by all the methods in the Java class. So this is very important because the Java class has uh, a time uh, to live that, uh, in particular, this Java class uh, has a time to live that corresponds to the uh, time in, uh, in which uh, all the application is actually running. And during this time, there are some information that must be uh, remembered, okay? So there are some variables that are called local. It means they are needed only for a short period of time. So local variables are variables that are needed typically only when uh, we call uh, a single function, but we also need uh, uh, variables uh, that contains information for a longer time. So these are uh, the, what I also call uh, instance variables. So variables that are specific of the class and not of uh, a particular function. So they are defined outside all the functions and uh, are needed to uh, store information that uh, will be useful for the all 
time in which uh, the class, in this case, the application is actually running. Okay, so here uh, there is a little bit of code that uh, we have seen before. So this is the portion in which uh, we link, we define the listener. So we link the button, the event of the button with the action. In particular, in this example, uh, we defined two say actions, say action one and say action two. Uh, we'll see in a while. And uh, the listener for button one is linked to say action two. So the semantics of this section of the code is that when button one is pressed, then say action two is executed. Uh, here we have the definition of the actions in this other function, init actions, in which we simply define two say actions. So they are two instances of the same uh, uh, say action. Uh, say action one, in which the robot says hello, and say action two, in which the robot says something like, okay, I'm ready to start. Okay, so you see these are two different actions. The one is named say action one, the other one is named say action two. And uh, we need these variables to be global with respect to the class because they are used also in other methods. So they are defined here at a global level with respect to the methods of this class. Now, how do we use them? Uh, we see that uh, say action one uh, is run in the own robot focus gained. So this means that this action uh, is executed uh, when uh, the application starts. It's exactly like the previous case, but now we have also another action. So we have also the second action uh, that uh, is run only when the button is pressed. So now what's the this application is doing is the following. When you start the application, the robot will say hello. So we'll execute the say action one, and then it will show the graphical user interface that contains the uh, button, this button with the label start. And every time you push this button, the robot will execute the say action two that correspond to say, okay, I'm, start, I'm ready to start. Okay, let's build uh, this uh, <clears throat> application. It's taking uh, some time. Okay, and then we run the application and we will see that uh, when we run, the robot will say, hello, you will see something appearing here. Then you will see the uh, user interface appearing. with the text and the button. Okay, the robot said hello. And now every time I push start, the robot say, okay, I'm ready to start. You see that now, okay, I'm ready to start is uh, uh, spoken by the robot every time I push start. And you, will, you can see also, of course, in the dialogue that uh, hello has been mentioned only once when the application started, while okay, I'm ready to start, is uh, spoken every time I push the start button. Okay, so we have seen how to link uh, input with the actions. Now let's see in this third example, uh, how to, uh, generate different actions. Now it's not a spoken action, but it's an action in which the robot will play an animation. Uh, there are many actions available, <coughs> sorry, and we will uh, show them uh, later on in the next lectures. Uh, now I want to show you how to add uh, uh, other actions that are animations. So again, uh, I will, uh, well, you can edit this uh, uh, file, uh, but uh, I already did it, so 
I will uh, uh, switch to another project. So once you have multiple projects, of course, you can close the current project and open a new one. Okay, so this is uh, the other project in which I already did uh, all the um, uh, instructions that you see here. And again, you can find everything uh, in the third example here that is called start animation. Okay, what uh, this application is doing is, uh, sorry. Uh, first of all, uh, I uh, loaded uh, an animation. H how to load an animation? Well, there are um, two ways. One is to create an animation. You remember that uh, in the last lecture, we showed that there are several tools available for the Pepper Robot. So robot application here is used to uh, create a new robot application, but then you have other tools about the generation of animations, uh, the uh, definition of dialogue system. We'll see this in the next lecture. And here we have uh, the last option, import animation in which we can choose uh, 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 some animations. So here you find uh, a set of animations that are already developed. And when you click any of these animations, you will see a preview of the animation. Okay, And when you find uh, the animation that uh, you like, uh, you select this animation. Of course, uh, you can, uh, as I mentioned before, create uh, your own animation and uh, also load uh, an animation that is created by yourself. Now, let's assume that we like this uh, animation, we select it, and uh, this animation will appear now in our project here. Now, I selected the, the gorilla animation before, now I selected hello, of course, you can select uh, different animations. Now, once we select these animations, uh, we have again to link uh, some input uh, with the execution of animation. And so we keep, uh, in this uh, example, we keep the start button. And uh, what we want to do is uh, to change uh, the behavior. And having that, uh, you see this is part is the same as before. Now, when uh, we push the button one, we want that the robot executes uh, two actions. The say action, so this is exactly the same uh, as the previous uh, example, in which uh, the say action two is uh, run, and the robot say, okay, I'm starting or whatever you want. But uh, at the same time, I want to run also another action, in this case, an animation action. So here I show you the gorilla action that means, uh, 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 run of this animation here, but of course you can change it. So uh, it is important to notice that uh, when you start an action, you can choose uh, uh, different ways. Uh, and one way that is the suggested mode uh, is the asynchronous run. So when you run an action in an asynchronous mode, uh, this means that uh, uh, this action is run uh, in parallel with the uh, continuing executing the uh, program. So it means that when you run these instructions, uh, the robot will not wait until the action is terminated before proceeding with the next action. So this is actually the semantics is uh, starts, start to execute the action, but immediately after, so it means uh, during the execution of this action, also this other instruction is run. So this is a, a simple and nice way to have the robot making two actions in parallel, because these two instructions will be executed actually in parallel. Well, in, in, in practice, uh, uh, the gorilla action is started uh, a few milliseconds after the say action, but uh, so they are not really in parallel. I mean, they are in parallel, but they are started uh, 
a few milliseconds one after the other. But of course, we will not notice. So, so what we will notice is that uh, the robot at the same time uh, will say something and will make uh, the animation. So this means that the gorilla action is another action that has been added to this project. And now we have the say action one and say action two that are the same as before. And now we have an additional action that we call it the gorilla action. And so it means that the init action methods that we defined before has been extended. So before we had only the definition of say action one and say action two, but now we have uh, another definition of the gorilla action. And this is the way of defining uh, an animation action. And here we specify the name of the animation that correspond to the name that you find here. And for example, if you want to change it uh, and instead of gorilla, you want to uh, play the hello A001 action, and then you just have to change uh, this name here. And in general, you can import any other animation and you use. Uh... Okay, let's leave the gorilla action. Okay, so now what would be the behavior of this application? When we start the application, we edit the actions. Notice that the initialization of the action will not run the action. The action will run only when you explicitly call the run method, okay? So the initialization is just setting the actions, but they are not executed. It just store the actions in the variables. So just say action, say action one, say action two, and gorilla action are available, but not yet run. Then uh, say action one is run when the focus is gained, while say action two and gorilla action are run in parallel when uh, button one is pressed. Okay, so let's see what happens now when we build. So sometimes if the build window does not appear, you can click here to see the result of build. And now we'll see the result of executing. So the robot will say hello. We will see hello appearing here and the graphical interface. And now when we push the button start, we will have at the same time, you will see the balloon appearing here that the robot say, okay, I'm ready to start or whatever. And you will also see the gorilla animation. Okay, so you've seen that the robot has done the two tasks in parallel. Again, if I click start again, it will repeat the two actions. Okay, <laughs> so uh, just uh, let me show you that uh, sometimes uh, when uh, you uh, write code, um, you may find, uh, for example, in the documentation, uh, only some information about uh, how to uh, add uh, instructions. So, of course, you can follow the tutorials uh, and uh, read how to execute other actions. And very often you will encounter a situation, for example, that some uh, portion of the code is not available. For example, you read in the documentation that you have to add uh, these uh, uh, lines of code and uh, you see something appearing in red. And uh, if you build, it makes uh, error like uh, uh, this class is uh, cannot find symbol. So when you have this uh, um, problem, so actually this errors, just because uh, you have to include uh, some uh, libraries. So the solution is very simple. You look for the first uh, red point. It's usually the name of the class. And when you over the mouse uh, here, you see that there are uh, some suggestion about how to solve the problem. So red things here uh, denote errors. And uh, the error is mentioned here, cannot resolve symbol. But there is also the suggestion about how to solve the error. 
and the error can be solved by importing the class. So what you have to do is just to click here and uh, what will happen is that uh, the, what is needed in order to uh, have this action is uh, uh, automatically imported. So what I did before was to delete this import statement and uh, the system, for example, also here animation is missing. I click import class and uh, now animation has been added here. Okay, so when you get errors uh, that are the kind that cannot find the symbol, you just uh, over the mouse on the red portion and you include uh, this. Uh, I think that it was, um, yeah, another interesting uh, example. Yeah, for example, the same for buttons. If uh, I remove this uh, statement, then uh, you see that now button becomes red. Red means error, but I just have to import the class uh, and the statement will appear again. Okay, so if you find uh, other uh, actions that you want to test, uh, and you can copy and paste something that comes from the tutorial. And sometimes the tutorial only mention uh, the main portion of the code and not uh, all the other import that you need to uh, add to the class in order to compile. But uh, uh, the process to add this is very simple, but just you have to follow the suggestion uh, that is uh, included in the error itself. Okay, so, um, Let me summarize uh, what we have seen. Sorry, it's been a little bit longer than one hour. I hope you don't mind. Okay, so and now I want to mention uh, something about uh, development of your team. And sorry, I don't have the chat uh, uh, window open. Uh, so I know that uh, uh, Jeffrey in particular and other people have been uh, possibly answering your question. So before I go ahead, uh, let me ask Jeffrey if there is any question that I should uh, answer or can I proceed? Yeah, don't worry. I think um, it's a software issue and um, engineers from SoftBank already like give some suggestions on that. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much for also this uh, help. Um, so uh, now you have seen uh, three simple applications, but there's just uh, some uh, interesting uh, behavior of the robot uh, that you can actually see with uh, your simulator even without the robot. So of course uh, you are invited to explore other possibilities. For example, you can add many buttons, so you can link different actions to different buttons. Uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, do other, uh, uh, implement other actions. And uh, <clears throat> we would like also to start uh, uh, making your uh, team development uh, setup. And in particular, we would like to suggest that each team will develop uh, its project with, uh, by using the Git uh, tool. So Git tool is very important. It's a version control system that has been specifically designed for multi-user development. And this is exactly the case for you because you are a team and uh, it's uh, important for you to work as a team. So maybe some, uh, uh, some of you will focus on the I don't know, the Android layout, some of you will focus on developing actions, some other of you may focus on uh, the dialogue and the chat and so on. But uh, you also have to work together on a single project. So it's very, very difficult and convenient if you work, uh, for example, exchanging email. This will not be possible by email to merge the code. And it's also not bad uh, and not good if only one uh, team member will be responsible of coding and all the others uh, will not do it. So Git is a very nice system that it's also good for you to learn how to use it because it allows uh, multiple users to work uh, jointly on the same project. And the Git system uh, 
is responsible for uh, making sure that uh, everything is aligned so that uh, each of you will be able to contribute to the project. Uh, this kind of version control systems has been used, uh, for example, to develop uh, big projects like uh, the Linux operating system or very large projects uh, in which uh, thousands of users uh, in all the world have been uh, uh, collaborating together. So it's perfect tool for you, for the team, and also it's perfect tool uh, for delivering your project to us. And uh, we show you in a slide what is our suggestion about uh, uh, development uh, so that uh, <coughs> you can easily uh, distribute uh, your code and we can easily test and you can easily make questions about uh, your code and we can easily answer. So our uh, um, idea is that uh, each team has to organize the code in a Git repository and uh, this will be part of the submission material for the completion. And in particular, <laughs> we would like to use uh, the uh, GitHub Classroom system. So GitHub Classroom is uh, a platform that allows teachers to share with the students uh, uh, a project. And so that the teachers can uh, uh, design assignments uh, and uh, students uh, will be able to work on these assignments. Now, in this case, uh, we have not teacher and students pattern, but we have the pattern of, let's say, organizers of the competition and teams. So we, as organizers of the competition, we have created a classroom, a GitHub classroom uh, um, that uh, we would like you to join. And you as a team, uh, uh, should join this classroom. So we would like uh, one team, uh, I mean, one uh, entry for each team. So you should not join individually. So not each student uh, as a, an individual student, but only one account per team. So you uh, will decide uh, within your team who is the team leader or in any case the responsible for this activity and uh, please uh, uh, create uh, if you don't have already one or if you have already an account uh, you don't need to create a new one uh, you can use your one but uh, it's up to you what is important is that uh, you as a team decide to create uh, one specific account per team uh, this is something that I already sent you an, info an email about it and uh, let me uh, remind uh, if uh, you are willing to join the competition, please fill the registration form because uh, we uh, already started to provide information to the teams uh, via email. So if you are listening to this lecture and uh, you want to participate to the competition but you didn't fill yet uh, your uh, uh, form, please do it as soon as possible because uh, we are sending information to the teams by email. And of course, we can do it only if teams are registered. Okay, so uh, once you have a GitHub account, of course, this is free. Again, one account per team, then please accept the assignment. So you go to this link and you click this link. And uh, when you click this link, you have to first login with the GitHub account and you will use the team account. If you want to, you can create a specific account for your team or you can use an individual account, but only of one student, okay? So one account per team. And once you accept this assignment, you will see uh, uh, the clone of a GitHub project that is actually a template of a Pepper application that is uh, very similar to the first uh, uh, template. So the, the first example that we've seen today. Uh, so this is also another way of uh, uh, downloading from uh, our repositories uh, uh, a template for a Pepper application that you can start uh, working on. Then uh, what you can do is to do the assignment 
I will show you the assignment in a while in the next uh, slide and uh, push the result uh, when uh, done. So uh, the repository can uh, be used to develop code and uh, when uh, or periodically, and in particular when uh, you are happy with the development, uh, you have to do this operation that is called push. So the push operation is an operation in which uh, you upload uh, your code from your local machine to the GitHub server. And when you upload this, this code, this will be visible. I've noticed that uh, uh, we configure the classroom in such a way that students, uh, and in this case teams, uh, will not be able to see uh, other, uh, the development of other teams. So this is a competition. So of course, uh, every team uh, has to keep secret uh, the development because uh, uh, each team wants to win. Okay, so uh, when uh, you accept the assignment, a copy of the assignment will be created for each of the teams. And we as organizers, as teachers of this organization, can of course see all the developments, but the teams cannot see the development of other teams. So uh, this means that uh, you are, uh, you will see the, the repository is private. Private, it means that uh, you can see, and of course you can grant uh, other uh, members uh, of uh, your team uh, to access this repository, but not members of other teams. So nobody will uh, uh, see your secret uh, uh, development, okay? So that's very convenient because you can, uh, first of all, you have a very nice tool uh, to work in collaboration, that is the Git repository. Uh, you have an, an, an easy way to get uh, assignment from us. So you just have to click on this link and to accept the invitation to participate to this assignment. And uh, we have uh, a nice way of monitoring uh, all the development of all the teams. So the assignment for this week is the following, is to use GitHub Classroom to develop a paper application that is called Introduce My Team. So when uh, you click here, you get a template, so you get uh, all the files that are needed to do the uh, task, the assignment, but of course so there is not the solution. And so you have to implement this solution. It's very simple, but it starts getting uh, uh, something that will keep you busy. So uh, the tablet screen should show the name and affiliation of your team. Okay, so in this application, Pepper has to introduce your team. So on the tablet, you should show in the way you like the name, the affiliation of your team. If you want, you put a logo, you can put images, whatever you want. So you can design a nice layout. Uh, it can also be very simple, like the one that uh, we have seen uh, today. But of course, if you make it nice, it will be better. And then a start button, okay? So that's the minimum information. Then you can have also other information. And then when the application starts, uh, the robot has to say hello or to greet people. But then when the start button is, push is pushed, the Pepper robot has to introduce the team using speech. So for example, it has to say, the robot has to say something that introduces the team. Uh, who are you? Where are you from? Uh, which school? Uh, why you are doing this challenge? Uh, what is your experience? Whatever you want. But it must be Pepper robot to say something about your team, not yourself. Okay, so uh, for this, uh, Assignment, please use, please use uh, the GitHub Classroom. So when you accept the assignment here, you will uh, get a clone of a repository that it's already named uh, Introduce My Team, but then of course you will have to uh, personalize and to add all the components. When you have done, or also periodically, you push uh, the uh, content or, or your app. And this information will be uh, also useful for us. For example, if you have a problem 
uh, you have questions, so you have uh, you want more details about what to do something, uh, it will be very easy because uh, we, so you as a team and we as organizing, uh, organizers are sharing the same code. So you can easily refer to line 35 of this file and we know what we are talking about. You don't have to send us by email uh, your source code, for example. So we will uh, use uh, this uh, tool uh, also for the next lectures. So in next lectures, we will uh, have uh, other assignments like this. And also the final project that will be used uh, and will be evaluated for the competition uh, will use this mechanism. So please make sure that uh, you will uh, um, uh, make familiar with this tool because uh, it is both useful for the development of your project uh, and important uh, for the um, challenge. Uh, last information is that uh, we agreed, thanks again to SoftBank uh, support, uh, to uh, a query and answering session in order to answer questions you may have about this track of the competition. So uh, if you have questions, uh, if you have any uh, information you want to get from us, uh, including of course problems in uh, setting the environments or problems with uh, um, <coughs> running the code or whatever, we are organizing this weekly meeting. It will be on Monday, 3.30 in the Central European Summer Time. So make sure uh, you understand the time zones since uh, we are uh, in a worldwide edition. So we have to specify not only the time, but also the time zone. So these numbers may not be referring to your Time zone. So this is the time zone of uh, uh, Paris and Rome. So it's a central European summer time. So Mondays, 2.30, 3.30, we are available on this uh, uh, Google Meet address to answer your questions. Okay, thank you. Sorry for being a little bit late with respect to the uh, schedule, but I think it's been uh, important. Uh, next lectures will be about dialogues more complex examples and advanced programming. Uh, okay, that's it. Um, maybe I can uh, enable my chat now to see if there is any question. Right, thank you, Luca. So just uh, while everyone, uh, if you have any question, you can type on the chat. Uh, windows and we will try to answer you and for the meantime for those who haven't filled up your attendance uh, please fill up the form for your attendance right and also uh, a few announcements like um, we also want to like um, encourage you to send in the entry form so uh, I think like uh, Luca has mentioned a few times that um, we will try to assimilate uh, information, uh, especially uh, competition specific um, information uh, that we will send via um, email to team leader. Right. So uh, please um, sign up for the entry uh, so that we know um, who is interested and we, we know where to send the information regarding the, uh, the competition, right? That's the uh, first thing. And also second thing is like, just now Luca just said about the Q&A. Luca, maybe you want to mention about the one on 6 p.m. as well for the general question. Sorry, but that's in Italian. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, and, and that is for Italian. But I think like yes, someone, the, yeah. yeah. So maybe yes, like but uh, I think that uh, Italian team members already know because I okay. sent them an email. Anyway, yes, we are planning also some uh, other uh, Q&A sections uh, that are specific uh, uh, for some uh, languages. And yeah. uh, I'm responsible of the Italian section. I know that there are some uh, 
sections for the Chinese uh, yep. um, people as well. And of course, if you need, you think you need support uh, in any other language, let us know and we try to find uh, someone who can uh, help. So at this moment, uh, um, I think that Chinese and Italian communities uh, looks like more active. Uh, of course, uh, in addition to English, uh, it is uh, the common language for this uh, uh, for these uh, lectures. Uh, so if you think it's useful to add uh, another language uh, in addition to English, Italian and Chinese, uh, let us know and we'll try to provide this, uh, some uh, session that is specific in some other language. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We try to organize and help like don't worry about the timing because like maybe now it's already like the second and the third class. Uh, but we still encourage people to join us and because we have all the videos available and all the uh, slides and everything and even the source code is on GitHub so you can easily pick up uh, the classes um, without much problem. So uh, we will try to organize uh, our community member or our, uh, the com community that um, work with us to try to provide you support, especially the local support, like in your native language and in the time zone. Okay, because I understand like um, this time might be not appropriate for some region. So we will try to organize something for your region. Right, but we, we need to know the need. So you need to come forward to us so that we know you want this thing. Then we can do the arrangement. All right, so um, I think like someone actually asked on the chat, like maybe Luca, you want to add something regarding the limitation of uh, of the emulator. Um, so I think that uh, the biggest limitation is that uh, in the simulator, some sensors are not uh, simulated. For example, there is no vision. So there, with the real robot, we can do very nice things about uh, vision processing. So uh, processing data coming from the video cameras in order, for example, to uh, track faces or to recognize people and stuff like that. This is not possible in the emulator because there is no link. In the emulator, we don't have uh, uh, audio signals, so we can simulate uh, dialogues uh, only through text uh, chat. So we'll see next uh, week uh, how to implement dialogues, but uh, in the simulator we are limited to uh, write and read text, while on the real robot uh, we can use uh, actual speech synthesis and speech recognition. And uh, so that's probably, and also uh, of course uh, in the emulator uh, we cannot define an environment, so the robot can move in the emulator, but only on an empty space. So we cannot put obstacles, so we cannot test, for example, navigation, and we cannot uh, create a map of the environment, we cannot put uh, like humans uh, in the emulator. So uh, the navigation of the robot uh, uh, can be simulated, but uh, uh, we cannot put obstacles, so we cannot actually test uh, uh, advanced features or migrations. So these are the uh, main uh, limitations or m the difference, uh, the differences. All right, any more questions? Uh, sensor inputs, no, I think that there is no uh, simulation of sensors. I think the only exception is the spoken uh, uh, text that can be simulated by uh, writing uh, something in this chat. So here in the robot viewer, in the di dialogue view, you can type something and this will be interpreted that the human say something and the robot will recognize. So this is, uh, as far as I can tell, the only uh, simulated sensor. So it simulates uh, the uh, speech recognition uh, task by just writing here what uh, you would say to the robot.
Okay, so if there are no other questions, uh, uh, thank you again for uh, participation. Uh, do your task. We will monitor you because uh, if you accept the invitation uh, for the assignment, uh, we can check uh, how much time you will work on the project. And uh, please do your best because I think this is a very interesting challenge. You will learn a lot, but you, of course, uh, you uh, will be also required to put some effort in learning these tools. Don't be afraid to try and do mistakes, that's normal. Uh, I always say to all my students at university that making mistakes uh, is normal and you have to learn from mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you will not learn from your mistakes. So don't worry, uh, don't be afraid to try and also to ask questions if you have problems. All right, thank you, Luca. And thank you everyone for joining this session. And um, uh, yeah, we hope you good luck for the attempt and learning. And the important thing is like you learn something while um, now everyone have to stay at home so you can like uh, improve yourself with, um, although we don't have paper in front of us now, but at least we can pick up something. So once, uh, uh, we're able to do the physical um, development, then you're ready for that. Right, so I think um, with that, I would like to close the session. So thanks, Luca, for the uh, lecture. And thanks for everyone for joining. Thank so yeah, thank yeah, thanks. So we will see you next week, the same time. And please also encourage um, your peers, your student, your friend, and so on to join us. Right, so with that, um, thank you very much and see you next week. Bye-bye, thank you. Right. See you.